everyone, Steve from Backcountry Gallery here, and this time around, I want to address a recurring question, and it's this. I get the question that goes, hey Steve, I'm thinking about mirrorless, but what, if any, are the advantages for a wildlife photographer, and are there any disadvantages? In fact, this question really started coming up after my video a couple months back entitled, Is It Time to Ditch Your DSLR? In fact, if you wanna watch that, I'll put a link in the card above and in the description area below this video. Now, before we get started, keep in mind that right now we're kind of in a transitional phase with all this stuff, and this video was published in August of 2021. If you're watching much after that date, things may have changed. So, with that in mind, let's start with some mirrorless advantages for wildlife photographers, and then we'll address a few downsides. Advantage one, AF all over. For me, this is the big one. If you've read or watched anything from me about autofocus, you know I like to compose and then move my AF point to the eye. Once there, I keep AF engaged as I shoot, so if there's any unexpected movement, the camera will instantly compensate. However, with a full frame DSLR, this is often a challenge since the eye frequently falls outside the AF field for the composition I want. So you have to either like focus and recompose, usually with the animal moving during the process, at least that's been my experience, or go with a looser crop that gets the eye inside the AF field. With mirrorless, I could place my AF point anywhere in the viewfinder and this problem completely goes away. Advantage two, tracking. A close cousin to the first is the superior tracking systems found in many mirrorless cameras. Also, when we're talking tracking here, we're not strictly talking about the camera's ability to follow focus as the subject moves and you keep it under the AF area, but rather a mode where the AF area actually chases the subject around the viewfinder. Well, DSLRs have tried this, Nikon's 3D tracking is a really good example. It just doesn't work nearly as well as it does in a mirrorless camera. Sony and Canon's tracking systems are really game changing for action and they stick with the subject in ways that were simply a fantasy a few years ago. As of this video, Nikon's mirrorless tracking isn't at Sony or Canon level yet, but you know what, I have a feeling that's gonna change soon. By the way, my favorite use for these tracking modes is with birds that are taking off. I've never found a better AF mode for that scenario. Advantage three, eye detection. Mirrorless cameras also offer eye detection, and while it's sometimes hit or miss, there are times it really makes nailing the perfect shot much easier. Take this little fox kit. Eye detection made it effortless to keep AF right on the eye, even though he was constantly squirming around and looking all over the place. If you've ever tried to chase the eye of a fidgety critter with a DSLR, you can appreciate how handy this is. Advantage four, silent shutter. The next advantage is silent shutter. It's super handy around more sensitive subjects and it keeps them from running or flying off. Advantage five, faster frame rates. Mirrorless cameras are starting to offer far faster frame rates than their DSLR cousins. Although it may seem crazy to shoot at 20 or even 30 frames a second, if you're doing action work, it makes a difference. For example, take this toucan coming in for a landing. This was the only shot with a perfect wing position at the perfect distance from the tree, and it was shot at 20 frames per second. Had I used a slower frame rate, I may have missed it. Faster frame rates simply allow you to capture more special moments with every burst, including this little scream from this lapwing. Neither shot on either side of it had the same wing position and the beak wasn't as wide open. Advantage six, wissy wig exposure. Although I've been shooting for decades now, I still blow exposure on a rare occasion when shooting a DSLR, usually because I neglected to change like exposure compensation or something from my last shot. With mirrorless, I can preview the exposure before I shoot and even use zebra stripes and histograms to help verify that I have it right. Plus, you know what? No more guessing at exposure compensation. It's absolutely great. Advantage seven, no AF fine tuning. Although it's technically possible, you may need to calibrate or fine tune a mirrorless lens. I've never had it happen. It's nice to just, you know, get a new lens, stick it on the camera and not worry about it and just go out and shoot. Advantage eight, no viewfinder blackout. Okay, this doesn't apply to every mirrorless camera, but some have no viewfinder blackout. We see it with the Sony A9 series and A1, and we'll see it with the Canon R3 and Z9 as well. It really does make it significantly easier to track and follow your subject. Advantage nine, no glasses. Okay, this doesn't apply to everyone, but one huge advantage of the EVF is that you can use your camera without glasses. As long as the diopter can adjust to your vision, you can run everything from the viewfinder. You can shoot, you can review images, you can run the menus, all of it right from the EVF. No need to ever look on the back LCD or put on your reading glasses. 
As a side bonus, this also makes it way easier to evaluate your images when you're in brighter light as opposed to trying to look at it on that back LCD. Although there are more advantages than just the nine we've discussed, like compact size, larger lens mounts, more programmable options and buttons, less vibration, and better viewfinder visibility in really low light, I think the ones that we discussed are the big nine for most wildlife photographers. However, it's not all roses and cupcakes. There are disadvantages that you should consider as well. Disadvantage number one, slow startup. Every mirrorless camera I've ever used takes a quick moment to start up and even maybe a half a second to come out of just standby mode. DSLRs are ready to shoot the millisecond you flip them on. Although I haven't lost a ton of shots because of this on my mirrorless cameras, I have lost some. The trick is to keep the camera on and at the ready if you think something is about to happen, although sometimes you can still get surprised and miss the shot. Disadvantage two, potentially suboptimal viewfinder experience. We also have to consider the overall viewfinder experience. Even the lowliest of DSLRs experience zero viewfinder lag, and that can't be said for mirrorless. No matter what mirrorless camera you have, there's lag. In some cases, you notice it. On higher end models, it's essentially imperceptible, but it is something to consider. Also, the EVF experience isn't for everyone. Although my Sony A1 makes me forget I'm looking at an EVF, it's really that good. You know, I can't say that about any other mirrorless camera I've used. Generally though, you do get used to the EVF after a time, but it you know, can take a little bit of adjustment. I think in the next few years though, the new EVFs will make this point history. Disadvantage three, battery life. The truth is DSLRs generally have better battery life than mirrorless. However, the reports of the short battery life in mirrorless cameras are completely overblown. While I change my batteries a little bit more frequently when shooting mirrorless, it's not that much different than the DSLRs. I have had days where I've shot between 3,000 and 4,000 shots on a single battery with my mirrorless camera. The key is keeping the rear LCD off and only using the EVF. It also depends on how brisk the action is. The more you shoot, the more shots you get per charge. The batteries don't really die from the actual shooting, they die from looking through the viewfinder and you know waiting for stuff to happen. So strictly using the number of shots per battery really isn't a good way to evaluate these things. It's more about how long the camera is actually turned on and being used. Disadvantage four, native lens availability. Another disadvantage of mirrorless at the moment is that generally they simply don't have the lens lineup that our Nikon and Canon DSLRs do. Sure, you can use adapters, but native glass is generally more enjoyable to use. In addition, the market for used glass is far more robust for DSLRs than mirrorless cameras. Disadvantage five, size. For some people, mirrorless cameras are actually a bit too small. Some shooters find a DSLR more comfortable, and although this kind of seems like a minor point, if shooting is uncomfortable, it can actually ruin the entire experience. Disadvantage six, no cross type AF. Another disadvantage is that, as of this video, mirrorless cameras simply don't have cross-type AF. They use line sensors that can struggle with horizontal lines and fail to focus. You know, it doesn't happen often, but it can. Disadvantage seven, mirrorless cameras love backgrounds. Another AF issue that's a little bit annoying is that mirrorless cameras seem more apt to get stuck on backgrounds and refuse to focus on closer, blurrier subjects without a little help, at least compared to DSLRs. Usually, I just manually focus the lens to get it close and hit the AF button, or maybe I focus on something that's about the same distance as my little blurry subject with no background, and then I try again. In practice, this hasn't proved to be a real problem for me, but it does cause an occasional missed shot. Disadvantage eight, camera price. The truth is, as of this video publication date, mirrorless cameras are pricey, and the used market for like something like a high-end mirrorless is almost non-existent. If you're on a tight budget and can't afford a high-end mirrorless camera, often a used DSLR will provide adequate performance at a much friendlier price. So there you go. I'm not sure if this video actually makes it tougher to make a decision or not, but at least now you know some of the advantages and disadvantages I've experienced with my wildlife work. Overall, for me, and not necessarily everyone watching this video, but for me, the advantages of mirrorless far outweigh the disadvantages. However, I'm also using the top cameras from Nikon, Canon, and Sony, and that does make a difference. In the end, you need to ask yourself the bottom line question, which type of camera most easily facilitates getting the shot you're after? If you notice, I never once claimed image quality was better with mirrorless or DSLRs. The real differences come down to field workflow and what options and features work with you to get the keepers on the card and which ones don't. 
and only you can make that call. We're all different and pretending there's like a single one size fits all answer for everyone is kind of ludicrous. Finally, I wanted to mention my latest ebook, Secrets to Stunning Bird and Flight Photography. I mean, are you ready to take your bird and flight photography to the next level, no matter what type or brand of camera you have? Are you tired of constantly feeling frustrated as you examine soft bird and flight photos on your LCD? Do you want to learn the secrets the pros use to consistently capture award winning bird and flight imagery? Then it's time to grab this ebook. Everything you ever wanted to know about securing your own slice of avian artwork is covered. Each page is packed with practical, field tested advice designed to put more keepers on your cards. Make sure you grab your copy today, you're going to love it. Also, be sure to stop by the site and sign up for my free email newsletter so you never miss a video, an article, or a workshop opportunity. Also, remember that if you have any photography related questions, to drop by the BCG forums. There's tons of friendly people over there that are just absolutely full of great advice. Finally, remember to like, subscribe, and get notified. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this video helped. Have a great day.